Before I go outside and do the barrel and all that jazz, I'm gonna go ahead and put the stock on. I decided with this Mission First Tactical Battlelink Minimalist stock for a mil spec buffer tube. So I've actually never used this. I don't think it'll be that difficult to install, but we'll go ahead and get it installed. Now this is actually super simple. So it just slides over and it's got a uh, little piece here you can kind of pull down on and that should help you. Well, like that. And then now you should be able to uh, just slide wherever you want it. And stock's done. You have the quick detach mount you can uh, use here. So I'm excited to test it out and uh, see how well I like it. So now that the lower receiver is pretty much completely done here, we are gonna set this guy aside and we are going to focus on finishing the upper with the barrel, the gas tube, gas block, all that jazz. So. To do that, I have to take y'all outside into the garage where we'll be putting it on a vice block so that I can torque it all down. So I will see y'all in the garage. We're out in the garage now and I am going to put our upper receiver here in a vice block. This, uh, I don't know if I know the brand of this one. I bought it a while ago. <clears throat> really like this vice block. It works pretty well. Um, it works for AR-15 and AR-10, which is awesome. Um, but basically, you just slide the pins in. All right, so then this sits over it, and you'll just put it <clears throat> in your vice grips here. You don't want to get it too tight because you don't want to deform your... Uh, receiver at all so you want it tight enough so it's just not going to move around when you start trying to torque this guy down that should be good so i am going to basically install the barrel and barrel nut at this time for this build the six and a half grindle build i'm going with a faxon match series barrel this is a 18 inch barrel, it's the Gunner 6.5 Grendel with the mid-length gas system. I'm a big fan of the Faxon barrels. I also like the Ballistic Vantage for kind of a little bit more budget friendly of an option as well. But the Faxon are, are kind of my go-to. So I'm going to go ahead and slide. Well, worries me a little bit because this is not sliding in correctly. All right, so I didn't video this portion, but I think you saw earlier that the uh, barrel really wasn't fitting that well into it. So I did a little bit of research and it seems like it's a pretty common issue people run into, not necessarily with the arrows, but um, I did see people run into it. And what they suggested was putting the barrel in the freezer and then getting a heat gun and heating around your upper receiver a little bit, about 30 to 60 seconds. Then you grab your barrel. I actually put a little bit of this arrow shell that I had shown y'all earlier on it as well. And you get it lined up and it actually slid right in. So um, worked out pretty well from everything I read. That's somewhat typical and actually is uh, helps out with a more accurate barrel, which kind of makes sense since this is a match grade barrel here. So now that I got that installed, we are gonna jump over to the barrel nut, which again, I have a Aero Precision. This is the AR-15 Quantum handguard. It's a 15 inch handguard. I bought the one that included the barrel nut. So I am going to go ahead and slide that on. And you're actually gonna need a torque wrench for this, so let me grab my torque wrench. 
So this is uh, supposed to be torqued down to 30 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this guy to right at 30 foot pounds, which is right there. Tighten it down. You'll need your armorer's wrench and you're gonna use these dots, the three dots that stick up here to tighten that down. So I'll essentially go in there. I'm gonna do it, get it to hand tight. And for a new barrel and a new barrel nut, you're gonna to want to, I forgot what they call it, but you're gonna to wanna to torque it down, untorque it, torque it down, untorque it. Do that three times to kind of loosen up your uh, threads there and so they don't get locked up. So another thing you have to know on torque wrenches, you want it to be a 90 like I have shown here. Uh, a lot of people make that mistake. When you have it, even with this, it changes the distance and you're not actually getting it torqued to, to what you think you're torquing it to. So we'll go ahead and torque this to 30. All right, so when you hear the click, you can flip it over or just use your hand and, and pull that off. So I'm gonna loosen this back up. I'm actually gonna put a little arrow shell on it too. Um, forgot to do that. That'll help, help make sure it does not seize up. So we'll tighten that guy back up and we'll torque it down and untorque it two more times. So now we'll tor torque it down to 30. And it's probably hard to tell, but basically you need one of these holes to line up with your gas block, which they say you don't really want to go over 45 foot pounds of torque. So they recommend if you don't line up around 30 to uh, grab your shims and start using some of the shims to get that to line up. So it comes here with some shims. So it's kind of, they have a little guide, um, but it ends up kind of being a little bit of a guess and check thing to some extent. You know, you can kind of get an idea. Each one's like about two millimeters is what it says. So I'm gonna put, I'm a decent amount off. So I'm gonna put like maybe four of these shims on there and just see how that lines up and it says on the instructions that you should be somewhere between about 30 and 45 uh, foot pounds of torque and you should have no problem getting it to line up that way so we will try this and see how that works and I don't think that's going to be enough you can kind of eye it up but you know where that is and I think I'm gonna need to add maybe two more. The last arrow handguard, I think I may have used all of them. So I, I don't know if it's dependent on the handguard or what, but we'll see how this one works. I added two more. All right, so that should do it. You wanna make sure this lines up and goes in. It would help if I uh, undid my clamp on block here. So I got a uh, Wagitech adjustable clamp on block. And that's what you see here. I like the adjustable because I tend to run suppressed. And so I've just started putting adjustable on everything. And then I personally like uh, clamp on 
because I don't like putting a dimple in my barrel. All right, so that fits nicely. What I like to do to make sure this lines up, most people say if you just butt it up against it, it should line up. And that's probably true, but I personally, I like to find, I like how this has these holes here. You can see your gas block inside there. Essentially, I like to draw a line where that gas block is in comparison to this edge. So basically, I drew a line right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. And you do the same thing on the barrel. You draw a line. And you really want to, if you need to take it off and make sure it's straight, or at least looks pretty straight, I'd go ahead and do that. So I believe that should be good. Again, without specific special tools it's hard to um, make that as exact as I'd like but I think I'm in a good spot there and we'll go ahead and tighten this clamp down and this has three screws you want to make sure you tighten them all evenly And I'm not sure if I mentioned, this is a Wajtech gas block. I had them go ahead and install the mid-length uh, gas tube. It was like an extra dollar or two. I just figured uh, I don't really like installing the gas tubes myself, so I would let them do that.